You're behind that tree. Now come on out. Now you have to come out. It's not fair. Welcome to Devlin's Domain. Today I've got an Arrow video release. Uh, and Scream Factory also released this film if uh, you're, you know, for the U.S. people. Uh, this is actually the U.K. release. I got a region free player, so I'm good. Uh, yeah, it is. It looks like it is region coded too to region B. So if, if you if you live in the U.S., you got to have a region free player to watch this. But this is the Incredible Melting Man. And the reason I got the U.K. version is for one. Arrow, I like their packaging better uh, as far as, you know, you get the booklet and uh, the extras are a lot of times better. And I like I like their artwork better on the cover than uh, Screen Factories. Uh, so, and, and this wasn't very expensive either. I got out of, uh, I think I had, a, uh, yeah, I picked it up. Uh, they had a sale on the Arrow Films UK site and I uh, picked up a few things. Uh, but they're, yeah, dirt cheap. So definitely cheaper than the Screen Factory stuff, uh, and yeah, I think I got free shipping too. Like if you buy so much, you get free shipping. So yeah, I get that's where I got the hookup on this. Uh, so I'll leave the link in the description. So for Arrow Films, you know, a lot of times they do a sale and you can get a good deal. Uh, but anyway, otherwise go to Screen Factory if you don't if you don't have a region free player. But this is the Incredible Melting Man. Uh, you know, known for the awesome special effects of Rick Baker. Uh, it says before he did American Werewolf in London, Videodrome, and Michael Jackson's Thriller. He was making a gooey pile of shit in this movie. Uh, so it's basically about these astronauts uh, returning on a mission to Saturn, and they return, and two of them are dead. And one of them's in critical condition, but then he gets up and starts killing people. And the whole time he's like, you know, pretty much just falling apart and melting. And that's intriguing to me. That just, that's just really gross when you think about a person melting, but still kind of like walking around. It's just so gooey and nasty and it probably smells awful. So that's appealing to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a, uh, it doesn't say if this is like a, 4K or 2K transfer or anything like that. I imagine there might have been some issues uh, as far as whether the elements they had to use. Because uh, usually Arrow will say like at least a 2K transfer, if not 4K. But uh, you got an audio commentary here with William Sachs, who's uh, one of the makeup artists. And uh, also an interview with William Sachs, Rick Baker, and Greg Canham, all who are makeup effects artists. And there's a Super 8 Digest version of the film, uh, transferred exclusively for the Arrow release, so you can't find this on Screen Factory. And uh, of course, new artwork, and you got a collector's booklet in here. So I uh, hope this is as nasty and, and bizarre as it seems like it will be. And the cover's pretty cool. You know, you got like Saturn in the eyeball. Well, you got, I'll give you a close up here. Let's open it up. There you go, the melting man. There's what I'm talking about. The Saturn eye. Of course, he's just like a big melty mess turning into a skeleton there at the top. Uh, the worst thing about the UK releases is that goddamn sticker. <laughs> like, that's on the cover and it's not coming off. It's just there. Uh, so that sucks. You got like a waterfall of melted flesh, it looks like. Uh, there's the synopsis. And there's your extras. I do kind of want to go back and compare these extras to uh, Screen Factory. It seems like they're already winning by. It seems like Arrow's already winning by having the Super 8 version, but I guess if this is good enough to watch twice. I'll go watch the Super 8 version. Hopefully, it is good enough. There's your disc for the Blu-ray. And you also have the DVD with the waterfall of flesh. So our reversible cover looks like. 
That's a pretty cool cover. I like both of those. This seems to embody the you know the outer space theme as well from when they went to Saturn. But yeah, that's pretty cool too. You know, it kind of kind of looks like a fly really in that picture when he was transforming. And let's look at the booklet they got in here. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Jeez, that poor bastard. They just keep getting worse. They're like getting goo on everybody. Looks like Dark Man there. <laughs> All right, this looks cool. I hope it's cool. I'll let you know in just a second. Well, this is schlocky. I hope you like I'm schlocky. Uh, <laughs> it's, I really liked it. Uh, I, I actually looked at the IMDb rating in this. It's like 3.8. I think it's ridiculously low. Uh, I mean, I can see, you know, people that aren't into, like, bad movies. <laughs> being like, oh, well, the acting is bad. And da, da, da. You know, I mean, I guess if you're, like, really anal like that and you, like more mainstream stuff then you'd probably hate this movie uh i liked it a lot i, I didn't think of even trying to be objective i don't even think it's like a 3.8 film i think it's maybe objectively maybe like a five uh i thought the story was pretty good it was sad it's tragic it, you know the acting definitely is bad uh it, it opens up where they're in space, like three guys on a spaceship, and they're coming up to Saturn, and the, and the main character, who becomes the melting man, he just delivers this line that, you know, is like magnificent. You know, so, something about the sun, the sun's rays shining through the rings of Saturn or something, that, you know, something that should be totally mind-blowing if you're sitting there looking at it, and he just has the most unemotional delivery of that line you know trying to express his emotions about it there's no emotions there whatsoever he's literally reading off the page uh, fortunately we don't have to hear him deliver any more dialogue because that's pretty much the last time he talks in the movie uh, that's another thing that doesn't make sense there uh, it's like they have like this incident in, in Jupiter or whatever and they're bombarded with like radiation or something and the two guys die, and one guy, the main guy, Steve, is like all fucked up, and he's out. He's like in a coma, I guess. And but somehow he gets back to Earth. And they didn't really explain that. Like, how did you get from Jupiter to Earth in in a reasonable time <laughs> where you didn't die on the way there? Uh, so there's there's some holes there, uh, which is fine. But uh, he he wakes up in the hospital on Earth and he's all burnt up and gross looking and you know he's all bandaged up. But he wakes up, he's freaking out. He's like, "What the hell's going on?" And he takes his gauze off, and looks in the mirror, and sees like he's a hideous freak. And uh, the nurse walks in and she sees he's a hideous freak and uh, drops her shit and takes off running in slow motion through a window. <laughs> And, uh, you know, because he's chasing her, because he's, he's freaked out. He turns into, like, a homicidal maniac. And they kind of half-ass explain it later. Like, whatever happened to him, he's, like, in need of human cells. And that's why he's killing people. Uh, because he's falling apart. But killing people, he's not really absorbing. Uh, I mean, I didn't get the impression he was absorbing any cells or anything. He was just killing people. But, uh... Maybe I missed something there, but uh, it, it was cool. I mean, the death scenes are really cool. The uh, the makeup on the on the melting man is awesome. It's just gooey and gross, and just he's just falling all apart all over the place. <laughs> he's leaving a trail of ooze everywhere he goes. 
there's like there's like a scene where like these kids are playing in the woods and there's like some goo on the tree and she's like oh what is this and she's like <laughs> she's like picking at his gooey flesh residue uh, there's an awesome beheading uh, I don't, they didn't actually show the beheading but they show the aftermath that's actually uh, what that is on the waterfall it's like there's a head there uh, he like tosses it off the off the waterfall and you see like this head fall and it hits a rock and it like the brains come out Ooh, badass uh, but yeah, there's a lot of cool, mostly it's just oozy, gruesome, nasty flesh stuff. Uh, but there are some cool, like, violent death stuff, too, like, you know, if you're into that. Uh, I thought the effects were awesome. And they, I think they made up for the, you know, everywhere else this thing was lacking. Uh, it's kind of weak dialogue, sort of a weak script, uh, and, you know, bad acting, but, you know, I, I think the gist of the story was good. Uh, you know, the the way they panned it out maybe wasn't the best way, but the 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 whole the general idea of the story I thought was good. And it was kind of sad, and they kind of do do like an ode to Frankenstein, you know, where he like meets the girl in the woods, and he you know there's you know you remember they kind of do that, and she even mentions Frankenstein, uh, so that was funny. Uh, but yeah, it, it's kind of a sad tale. It's tragic, you know. He, he's you almost you feel sympathy for the guy because he, he. I mean, he looks gross. It's bad. It's real bad. Uh, but he's killing people. So I mean, if that was me, I'd probably just kill myself if I was all that bad off. Like, obviously, he doesn't want anybody to help. He's just running through the woods. Uh, like running away from everyone, but also running into everyone <laughs> that he comes across and killing them. Uh, yeah, I don't... And then at the end, well, I don't, I'll get into that. <laughs> you should watch it. It's worth a watch. Maybe, you know, it's not for everybody. Maybe not. You, you Maybe you want to watch it before you buy it, you know. I'm glad I bought it. I like it. I'll watch it again. Uh, I might even watch that Super 8, because I turned it on for a second, and it has like this you know, very vintage look to it. It's just, you know, it's full screen. It's, it's, uh, raggedy image, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of cool. And it kind of adds to the, to the experience, I think. Uh, as for the commentary, I might actually watch it with commentary too, with the director, William Sachs. And there's also, uh, the interview with William Sachs, the director and, uh, Rick Baker. And that was pretty good. That was all, almost like a making of documentary. It was, it was pretty lengthy, maybe like, well, I won't say lengthy. It was like 10, 10 or 15 minutes, maybe. Uh, probably closer to 10. But uh, they just kind of go over like the, how the effects worked out and how they ended up on the job and kind of what came after that. And then there's the uh, other interview with Greg Canham, which is really short. It was like only two minutes. So there's not much in terms of special features on this, but you do have the booklet. Uh, I count that as a special feature. It's a nice booklet, uh, and Screen Factory doesn't have that. Uh, but I kind of do want to look and see, like, if they have anything that Arrow doesn't have on their release. Uh, would be interested. I don't know if I double dip on this one though. I don't like it that much. Uh, but I, I'm glad to have this one with the awesome cover with the eyeball Jupiter and all that, or Saturn. That was uh, I can't remember Saturn. <laughs> My bad. I said Jupiter earlier. Fuck it. Anyways, hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that like button and hit subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys later.